Hello and welcome. Today we're going to discuss um, Jupiter as the chart ruler based on the ancients. In this particular case, it is uh, Firmicus Maternus, who lived approximately uh, 300 AD. Um, and it's important to note, as we said earlier, that the chart ruler process, um, as I will show, as I'll show a sample, This is Oprah Winfrey's chart. Um, and just to show you an example that the chart ruler that Firmicus Maternus is talking about is not the typical chart ruler that um, is very common today. And interestingly, he said that this chart ruler is the process that was well accepted in his time almost 2000 years ago. So what is the current process of chart ruler? So usually when you think chart ruler, you think the ruler of the ascendant. In Oprah's chart over here, we see the ascendant is in 29 degrees of Jupiter, which means that um, in today's practice, Jupiter right over here in the seventh house would be the chart ruler. However, according to Firmicus Maternus, the uh, chart ruler starts with the moon and is the next sign over from the moon. So the moon is in Sagittarius, the next sign over is Capricorn, and the ruler of Capricorn is Saturn, which over here is in the 12th house. And this is, for example, Oprah Winfrey's chart ruler, not Jupiter, according to today. Um, whether this has validity, more validity or less validity, um, I'm uncertain. Um, however, I will say that this is what Firmicus is talking about, and this is what we're going to be discussing today. In today's example, we will be discussing um, what the implications of a Jupiter chart ruler is. So this is from his book, Firmicus, Julius Firmicus Maternus. The cover we saw in the beginning is uh, the cover of his book, right over here, if you'd like to get it. And we are on page um 139 i believe and we're discussing jupiter so he says jupiter number nine jupiter those who have jupiter as ruler of the chart are always trustworthy of high spirit and are impelled towards great deeds they spend more than their resources or their inheritance allows commanding in all their acts noble famous honorable levels of lovers of luxury cheerful desiring to please in every way large eaters faithful friends they are simple and friendly to all, successful and accustomed to do everything well. So number 10, it goes on, their body is of middle size, uh, but well formed. So this is actually an interesting note because Jupiter, which is known as the planet of expansion, um, you'd think that if there's any planet where somebody would be considered taller, it would probably be at a Jupiter. Uh, but we can probably say that the implications of that will probably be if Jupiter is placed in the first house, because the first house is more representative of the features, the physical features of the person, or if the ascendant, or I guess if the chart ruler is in the terms of Jupiter, maybe. Um, so he says their bodies of middle size, but well-formed, uh, handsome, and they are light complexion of beautiful eyes and head with long flowing hair firm of step their life will be glorious and filled with good fortune and they attain all their desires their activities turn out well and they are protected by the influence of great men they always love their wives and children and their sons are successful so that they reap much deserved respect from the position of their sons their illnesses come from stomach trouble from wine and from indigestion death comes from high living hemorrhoids or sexual intercourse so now Let's go a little bit deeper. Number 11, when Jupiter is ruler of the chart, you must carefully observe the same things you did with Saturn and the other planets. To give you one example, which will instruct you with the rest, if Jupiter is the ruler of the chart and holds one of the first angles, okay, and in the past he explained that when he says first angles, he's referring to the ascendant angle, the first house, and the... Uh, 10th house, the MC angle. And the second angle, are, angles, plural, are the 7th house and 4th house. 
So now when he says first angles, plural, he's talking about the first and tenth house. He says either in his house, so let's start again. If Jupiter is, in, is the ruler of the chart and holds one of the first angles, either in his own house or his exaltation or his terms or in the house of exaltation of the sun, and if it is a diurnal chart with influence of benefic planets, and if the full moon is moving toward Jupiter, and Mars did not hold any angle and is not in opposition to Jupiter or the waxing moon, this chart shows every indication of good fortune. So we're showing good fortune when all of these implications are in place. So let's go back and review what these implications are. So he says, you have good fortune if all of this happens. So what, what are the details again? If Jupiter is the ruler of the chart, so that we already know, this is what we're talking about, and holds one of the first angles. Okay, so we know that that's a good indicator if you're uh, chart rulers, especially in this case, Jupiter's in the first or 10th house. And it's either in his own house. Okay, so, so he's saying, not and either, he said either. So you need the combination of Jupiter, which is the ruler of the chart, to be in one of the first angles. And one of these angles, the first house or the 10th house, are either in his own house, meaning that Jupiter is in Sagittarius or Pisces in the first or 10th house, or his exaltation, or it's in uh, Cancer, I believed, I believe, or his terms, or in the terms of Jupiter, or in the house or exaltation of the sun. So either in Leo or in Aries. Okay, so you need to have um, you have you need to have all the above, not everything, one of these. So, but it needs to be either first house or tenth house, plus in addition to being in Sagittarius and Pisces, his own house, or exaltation and cancer, his terms of Jupiter, or in the house or exaltation of the sun which would be uh, Leo or Aries, okay? So these make sense because the first angles are the most powerful. When they say they're in his own house, that makes sense. That's a good thing. In his exaltation and his terms, that makes sense. We've seen that before. Or in the house or exaltation of the sun makes sense because Jupiter is part of the diurnal sect. Um, I'm so interested in why it says or. I mean, um, I guess because, well, yeah, I mean, it should say, okay, I guess it depends. But uh, so the sun is of the sect, and if it's a diurnal chart with influence of the benefic, one second, what are we holding? Oh, and if it is a diurnal chart, okay. So this is an addition, okay, with influence of benefic planets, plus influence, in this case, of Venus, uh, because that's the only other benefic planet. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, you know, additions over here that have to make this turn out perfect for good, perfect good for fortune, as we mentioned. Then it says... Um, and if the full moon is moving toward Jupiter, so this is an interesting one. And the reason why is because Jupiter is a diurnal planet. The moon is obviously nocturnal. And um, ideally, I don't, I don't know why we would want the moon to be moving toward Jupiter. What the implications of that? What's the implication of that? Because as a, noct as a nocturnal planet, the moon, we don't necessarily want that to be around the diurnal planet of Jupiter. Then it says, and Mars does not hold any angle. Okay, if I understand that correctly, it means that Mars is not on the first, seventh, fourth, or tenth house. Because those are the, where the angles are located. Uh, which is an interesting note. And it says it's not in opposition to Jupiter. Or the waxing moon. So this is an this is the first time I've seen this where they're basically barring a malefic planet. And in this case, 
because it's a diurnal planet, I guess Mars is a greater malefic. But and it doesn't say that Saturn shouldn't hold. It doesn't mention Saturn because it's not the greater malefic, I guess. But it doesn't say that Saturn shouldn't be holding an angle. Um, but I've never seen this before where, you, you know, the good fortune relies on the malefic not having an angle. If anything, we actually saw the opposite, which is if a malefic is in an angle, then it's better for the chart. Right. So this is actually something that seems contradictory. Um, you know, you would think that a malefic planet placed well in an angle will bode well for the person. So this is a little surprising for me. I actually don't, if you know, um, in terms of discussions, I'd love to hear people's opinions. Love to hear what you have to say in the comments, what your thoughts are on this. Please offer educated opinions or, or sources or clarify that your opinion is just a thought. Um, then it says that Mars does not hold an angle and is not in opposition to Jupiter. So it's not allowed to be in opposition to Jupiter. Interesting, it doesn't say in negative aspect, which precludes um, a square out of this, which means that a square is not necessarily as problematic or a problem as opposed to opposition. And then it says, or the waxing moon. So the sentence, and Mars does not hold any angle and is not in opposition to Jupiter or the waxing moon. So that means that Mars is not an angle and is not in opposition to Jupiter or in opposition to the waxing moon, um, which is interesting because over here it's showing that we don't want to have opposition from a malefic to the waxing moon. I guess that always makes sense. You know, you don't want the aspect of a malefic, especially a negative aspect. Um, I don't know why the moon is brought in this picture, though, because Jupiter is a diurnal planet. And, and you know, up until now, we want to stay away from the moon. So it's a little interesting what's going on. Um, but, but I do know that waxing moon is somehow is connected based on what he said in the past. A waxing moon is a good thing for a diurnal and like a waning moon, I, I believe, if I understood correctly, is more fitting a, a nocturnal chart. So then this shows um, every indication of good fortune. Okay. Next, page 140, finishing up Jupiter is number 12, and then we're going to go, uh, and after that's March. Okay. Then it says 12. But if Jupiter is in signs or terms in which he is dejected or in sluggish houses. So when it says dejected, I'm assuming that the reference is that it's in detriment or fall, which would be uh, mercurial planets, which would be, uh, sorry, mercurial signs, which would be Gemini or Virgo. So we don't want Jupiter in those. I'm assuming we don't want them in those houses. In the past, we've seen where, um, you know, where they're discussing, I think, Saturn and Leo, which is his detriment, and it mentioned it as a positive thing. So I'm, I'm not sure what dejected particularly means now. Um, it could mean so, something else. Um, a signs, in signs where he's dejected, I, I think it's pretty obvious that it's detriment or fall. Um, in terms which he's dejected, Jupiter, uh, I'm assuming will be dejected in Mars, in the terms of Mars or Saturn, um, or maybe maybe uh, even Mercury, since it's uh, it's in detriment and fall in, in Gemini and uh, Virgo. So back, back, but if Jupiter is in signs or terms in which he's dejected or in sluggish houses, um, which I would assume are the sixth house, the eighth house and the 12th house uh, for sure, and then possibly other cadent houses or uh, the like. And if he, I'm assuming Jupiter, and the moon. So, so let's see what the conclusion is. They're, they're giving a lot of uh, conditions. It says the conclusion is the native will lack strength and be deprived of all powers. 
There's nothing great in his chart and not a whole number of years of life. Okay, so basically if all of the above happens, then um, it's not great. They're going to lack strength. So if Jupiter, so if Jupiter's in signs or terms in which he's dejected or in sluggish houses, and if he and the moon are attacked by the unfavorable aspect of malefic planets, the native will lack strength and be deprived of all. So first of all, the, the terminology is a little interesting. Um, Again, we're talking about the moon. I don't know why we're talking about the moon again. For Saturn, we didn't discuss the moon. I don't get it. It says, as, I'm, I'm really curious if you want to discuss this, make a comment. I'm curious to hear. He says, and if he and the moon are attacked by the unfavorable aspect. So first of all, this is interesting. The terminology, I don't know if this got lost in translation or if this is the terminology because it says, Attacked by the unfavorable aspect of malefic planets. So first of all, having an aspect from a malefic planet, it's almost like he's he's saying that having any aspect of a malefic planet is an unfavorable aspect, whether it's a trine or square or opposition, um, because they're calling this unfavorable aspect any connection to a malefic planet. In the past, of, uh, I think for Saturn, the way it was described is if there are unfavorable aspects from a malefic planet, which means that if you have like a square or an opposition from Mars or something, then it's not good over here. It's saying that having any aspect of a malefic planet is bad. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if it actually means, if it includes a trine and a sextile uh, to Mars, let's say, or if it got lost in translation, then it says the native will lack the strength and be deprived of all powers. There's nothing great in his chart. So this is a very broad blanket statement, which is um, interesting, but it, it sort of makes sense. Um, obviously, there's a lot of other indicators which can be good in the chart, but being the chart ruler, especially since the chart, you know, with perfections and uh, solar arcs, you know, it's basically repeated, you know, year after year, every, especially every 12 years, you come back to the same place, you know, you're, you're working off the same map. So whatever position Jupiter is in, if it's not in great position, then even throughout their lives, every time um, it's already, they're starting on a difficult start. Um, and if there is a transit from a malefic, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really help much. And, and if they get a transit even from Jupiter or Venus, I've heard in other places that the condition, the, the only value that a transit planet like Jupiter can offer is the value that it represents in your chart already. So if your Jupiter is weak in your chart, then even when Jupiter passes over as a transit, it cannot give you more than it already offers part of the map of your chart. I don't know how accurate that is or if it's a, um, a principle that's widely used, but I've seen that recently. Um, so there is something to say about that there is nothing great in his chart. It's obviously a, a very big blanket statement, but it's, it's not necessarily um, that extreme. Um, but the interesting thing also is that this is a benefic planet that has become weak, um, which is interesting to note because, you know, it doesn't go into the extremes. Let's see what he says to the end, then I'll get back to this. Not a whole number of years of life. For if malefic planets are in opposition or square aspect, according to their strength, they subtract from the decreed number of years. So this is interesting. When we looked at Saturn previously, it spoke about a lot of, you know, details in terms of sicknesses and potential illnesses that can happen. It already talks about like off the bat, you know, 
if the, the Saturn is not in the right sect, all these technicalities, the person's bald, they have problems, they're already like have sicknesses. If they have a connection to a benefic planet, an aspect, then the sicknesses can be cured, right? But they're just dealing with a lot of problems. And if they have aspects to more negative planets, then they will, you know, they can, God forbid, die from these planets or whatever. It could become even worse. Interesting here, when you read about there's nothing great in his charts over here, it looks extreme and bad. But um, it's only in comparison to what Jupiter has to offer. That means that, like, if, if Jupiter is like we explained before, right, we said over here, um, well-formed, handsome, light complexion, it says that they attain all of their desires, filled with good fortune, their activities turn out well. You know, Jupiter already is set up to be a super success. So that basically means that if it's messed up, if the Jupiter is messed up, then their success will just not be, and they may be, you know, lackadaisical or... Uh, lazy, stupid, or, you know, maybe just somebody who just, you know, has the elements of living the good life, but not necessarily the means to live it, right? Um, so while that's um, a life that's not exciting and it doesn't sound, you know, so great, um, in, con in, in, in comparison to saturn's difficulty from the get-go this is actually not necessarily as bad uh the interesting thing here is that there's an emphasis on the decreed number numbers of years um as opposed to um death from like illnesses um which is which is interesting um i guess they're just gonna like eat themselves to lack of health or something anyways um, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your questions. And please feel free to uh, comment and fill me in if you have any um, sources, ideas, or perspectives on what we discussed. All best. Have a great day.